I'm doing the math here. I'm like, I was expecting a lot less yeah. numbers than 142. Yeah. I'm like, wait a minute. You have, okay, yeah. two caseworkers, one child program office, three dance yeah. instructors. No, no, okay. no. It's, it's much not more adding up, right? Yeah, yeah. I will get that updated with, with like a list of so many maintenance, so many um, management staff, so many teachers, so many caseworkers, so many um, cooks, so many maintenance people, drivers, security guards. There's a whole list of um, of people that are cert certainly more than what shows on the website at the moment. So I will get that corrected. Okay. Um, so you would, so be, would you say is, you brought up the government a lot. Right? So is this a quasi government and private? Project? Yes. Uh, so can you just ask that question again? I didn't understand the question. Public, private? Because you brought up the government uh, quite a bit. Uh, well, we are um, a registered charity in Australia. How, and much, we, how much influence does the Cambodian government have on oh, children's Huge, lives? huge, huge. Um, we're also a registered non government organization with the Cambodian government here. We report to them every three months with um, all our details. Um, I have extremely good relations with the Minister of Social Affairs and other people lower down in the ministry. Um, and we work well together. I couldn't work without them. And um, I know they are grateful for the work that's done here. Um, your website also mentioned that you administer drugs. Was it, or was, I think it was an article that I read about you. Um, there's HIV children that have to be administered drugs. Who yep. looks, what it, the hey. medical aspect of your organization? Um, that's okay, um, all the HIV children are in Seanookville, and we've got 80 there now. Over the next few months, uh, the ceiling that we can take is 200. And all of them have house parents in small little um, dorm communities, and the house parents, male and female, have been given, given advanced um, training on how to administer HIV drugs. We get the drugs from the Ministry of Health free, and those drugs have been given to the Ministry of Health by the Bill Clinton Foundation. But then it's the Ministry of Health that deals them out to people who have to take care of um, children and families with HIV. And we have to account for every pill. Because um, if you could imagine, there are a lot of people out there with HIV um, who have access to, to drugs that are um, it's a corrupt business that is being sold on the streets. So because we get our drugs from the Ministry of um, Health, uh, we have to give a monthly report on the names of the children and how many pills they've had a day. It's very, very closely monitored. And that also opens another can of worms, potentially, because there's another market there. Yeah, well, uh, we know that the drugs we get from the Ministry of Health have come from a safe source. Uh, we, uh, mainly because not, I haven't had a death in 12 months. Okay, um, so I know, I know the kids are getting the right medication. A couple more things on your website, and this was, um, there's a strict policy on photo taking during a visit, and yeah. yet, okay, I look at your website, there's kids all over the place, so I'm, okay, it's a bit well, paradoxical. They've been, yeah, well, they've been taken by me and my staff, um, and most of them are group photos, but what we are uh, conscious of that somebody um, might have a photograph of a young boy or a young girl and then they send it on, off on their Facebook or on their social network and, um, you know, less desirable people might use those photographs for another purpose. Right. Um, you can't guarantee that that's not going to happen. We do ask people not to put photographs that they take on their Facebook. But the photographs that we put on there, I mean, if we don't, didn't have them on there, people wouldn't see what we do. Hence, that's why you, what I'm trying to do is make help me understand why the strict policy and whereas them being paraded on the websites being so rampantly it's quite a bit well maybe may um if you compare this with other centers too you will find they're all doing the same thing world vision save the children child fun red cross we all do that um well, they don't have geraldine cox as the spokesperson or the face of these orphanages you pretty much you have helped a whole um mm aspect of bring this into the limelight, if you may. Well, I'm confident um, that whatever you say about children maybe being exploited by photographs and so on um, is necessary to a point to achieve the goals of getting the money I need to raise. Um, and if some others see that as um, 
not good, well, um, if they can give me a million dollars, I'll stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Clever answer. Okay, which brings me to one last thing about your website. Okay, I try to be open-minded about it, but I mm -hmm. ran into more more links that were um, that involved transacting money in some form, like uh, could be either about refunds, merchandising, public yes, well, policy. That how, kind of puts me off a little bit. How mm -hmm. else are you going to raise money if you can't offer products to sell people that are interested in giving money to a charity? How else do you raise money? Um, we have a page uh, under our fundraising page now where if people want to donate to our medical, a bike or rice to our music program, they can click on that, on that item and support something that they're really interested in supporting. And uh, I frankly don't see anything wrong with that. We give people who look at the website an opportunity to put their money where they want. Um, but, you know, fundraising, when I'm the only person doing the fundraising, I have to come up with ways to interest people. And I've interested in, you, you, you've been interested from the website. Right, right. Uh, all of the things that you've said aren't flattering. They are um, honest criticisms. Some of them I'll take into account, like bringing up the, the, the numbers of the staff. Um, but I'm sure that the people that might see this will be interested to go and look at the website and hopefully give me some money. That's why I'm talking to you. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. let's bring it on. Okay, well, let's talk about your $185 uh, Valentine's dinner. What does that mean? What does that entail? Uh, okay, um, we, we're at the Intercontinental Hotel in Adelaide. Um, we have Adelaide. some local, local celebrities that you wouldn't know of that are donating their time and their travel and their... Um, uh, performances for free. Um, you get a, a, a three-course dinner, um, fine wines, there are silent auctions and um, real auctions. We've had big items donated to us like a world cruise on a ship, um, a weekend uh, during New Year's Eve in a Sydney um, penthouse for the fireworks. Um, we've had very, very respectable people give us big prizes hoping that people will give money at the auctions to help us with our cause. So this is... Uh, some of our children who are in Adelaide will also stand up and talk for three or four minutes about how they have um, succeeded in Sunrise and what they're doing in Australia and what they're studying. One of them will play the piano, one of them will sing, so that people can see how a child's life can be changed through love and opportunity and, dare I say it, money. Can't do money anything that I'm doing without money. Right. I, we all thrive on money. If we don't have money, we can't move. Um, mm. Can you understand how some people would misconstrue the Sunrise Children setting as a form of exploitation for these children and help these people that have that frame of mind understand what you're doing? Well, if they have that frame of mind, there is little I can do to change it but that there are 10 times more people that don't see it that way. But I respect the views of those that do see it that way. Um, but if they can come up with some advice for me on how I can raise money without showing pictures and stories of my children, tell them to contact me. Okay? Well, hopefully this will um, spur some sort of dialogue or discourse with those people that, that are yeah. uh, watching you very carefully and you are and aware that you are being watched. Okay, and how uh, how is this being broadcast? What sort of people will it reach? This is the, the travel and tourism, but there will be a lot more through the website, and um, there's going to be an article accompanying okay. this. Uh, uh, if I'm known for one thing, and one thing uh, at the top of the list is for my honesty, whether it's it's um, something people want to hear or don't want to hear, you know you're going to get the truth when you uh, interview me. Sooner or later, it'll pop up. Um, yeah. You are a non-profit organization. Um, can you f put a figure in how much is generated manually? So perhaps those people who think they're giving enough should oh, give more. Oh, oh, I'd love to talk about this. Okay. Since we started in 1994, we've kept our admin costs to below 10%. Now, I ask anyone who's watching that to go onto other websites and see how much of their money gets through to the source. You give me $100, $90, uh, $90 uh, gets to the children, the rest is spent on admin costs for our office in Australia and things like that. And and that's something we're really, really proud of. 90% gets through to the kids. 
Um, a lot of other big organisations here that do great work um, travel business and drive eighty thousand or a hundred thousand dollar Lexuses and Land Cruisers, uh, which has got to push their uh, admin costs up. Um, I live with the children. I eat with the children. Um, so my admin costs are very low. I drive a 13-year-old Toyota RAV um, and I travel economy. So um, that's how I can keep the admin costs low because a lot of people don't live in their projects. They live in the city, they have a $3,000 a month apartment, they have an expensive car and driver and security guard and all of that. I don't have any of that. I'm mum and I live with the kids. Um, how much was um, generated, uh, say, what was it? Uh, in 2012, for an example? A um, million dollars, that's what I need. Mm -hmm. That's roughly, I mean, giving, give and taking, you know, 20 that's, or $30,000 here and there. US dollars or Australian dollars? Um, US dollars, that's what I need here. All our costs here are in US dollars, yeah. Uh, a couple uh, of things here. Um, you c recently re referred to yourself as Meryl Streep. Um, I can't help that. That's me. That wasn't me that referred. Uh, see, this is where journalists like, I get a bit angry with them sometimes. Um, I, in an interview, when I was um, having a meeting with Hun Sen and begging him to give me land because I'd been kicked off the land that I was on, I said in my mind, in the movie that Meryl Streep was in, called Out of Africa, in that movie, she begged the local governor who was closing down her home and her farm, she begged him on her knees to please keep her uh, staff on. And I said to this journalist, I thought if Meryl Streep can do that in a movie, well then I can do the same thing. Um, and it was misconstrued entirely. It's just, it's just that I chose to do something similar that Meryl Streep did in a movie. Right. I did it in real life. I was gonna so say, which it, character or, do you, or which role do you, but you just answered it. it was a, uh, I thought it was a, uh, an interesting thing to bring up. And it, it seemed like but it was I a didn't. question and answer. Type of thing. Yeah, and it, it was the Guardian. It was the Guardian newspaper, a very respectable newspaper. But they just chose to put the Meryl Streep in the headline to get people to read it. Who's going to read it if it says Geraldine Cox? No. Okay, no. I I copied the behaviour of a character in a movie, which, so is, which makes you a very interesting, interesting uh, subject interview for me. Yeah. What well, hands yeah. I open the lines. Um, a couple of things that, that are being that are putting you in a you brought up the Prime Minister and the yes. history. Um, I've read a little bit about it. Uh, yep, he's a big part of our life here. Um, when I first came back to Cambodia, I worked for the Royal Party politically. Um, I had a lot of um, uh, disrespect for uh, Hun Sen as a military leader. Uh, and uh, when, when he mounted the coup and threw my Royal Family Party out, I was not happy. Um, but in a country like this, no one is going to help you if you're not protected in some way. Now, Hun Sen, if you read his book, Strong Man of Cambodia, he was brought up by a very poor family. Um, his parents put him in a pagoda because they couldn't afford to educate him. He didn't finish high school. Most of his adult life was as a guerrilla fighter in the jungles of Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge before he knew how bad the Khmer Rouge were. And he's killed people, probably hundreds of them. But how can we compare ourselves with someone who's lived a life like that to ours of privilege and never ever been put in the situations he would have been put in? Yes, he's done some terrible things. You could say that about almost every prime minister in this part of the world, um, that they have done things that they're not proud of. And I'm sure Hun Sen would agree with me. He actually read my book and saw my documentary and said it was an honest portrayal of the type of life that is here in Cambodia. Um, he gives us protection. He's given us two lots of land, uh, the one that I'm on for 10 hectares, um, and the land in Sienotville for the HIV centre. He gave us um, uh, electricity from the, from the main power supplies. Um, but all of this is because I asked him for it. Um, and um, another thing I've been brought up with, my mother always used to say to me, Geraldine, if you don't ask, you don't get. So um, I put a request to him all the time and he's never let me down. But I don't ask for me, I ask for the children. Um, I take children to Australia to perform traditional music and dance and I asked him for free passports and for the airport fee to be waived. 
because we couldn't afford it. We got it. Um, we got the electricity, we got the land. Um, and as long as I keep my request for the children and not myself, he is very happy to, to give me what I want. He opened our third orphanage and um, it's four hours drive from, uh, from town. He flew down and opened it and that um, in the local community to have the Prime Minister open your centre gives you a lot of approval and respect from the local people if the Prime Minister of the country uh, sees you as some, somebody worthy of support. Uh, you were quoted as saying um, you had the Prime Minister um, right from your first meeting, I believe, and then you had him there since. 